They mocked me. They treated me like a lunatic instead of an artist. They didn't realize I could think with my paintbrush and that my various experiments were a perfectly legitimate form of painterly expression. Sunday, May 11th, 1962. Yves Klein is on his way to the Cannes Film Festival, where Mondo Canet is being screened as the opening film. Director Jaco Petty documented Klein's anthropometries, prints of nude women covered with blue paint. Klein believed that he had finally achieved worldwide recognition. Seven years ago, when I first began my experiments, I never thought I would have to justify what happened. Many people still believe that I am a threat to the future of art, a threat that must be destroyed. I'm sorry to inform them that such was never my intention. Some years ago, I organized a lecture at the Sorbonne. My purpose was to set forth my theory of art. First, I invited Iris Claire to speak. Mesdames, Messieurs, j'ai le plaisir ce soir de présenter Yves Klein. Je me suis décidé à l'exposer dans ma galerie en 57. Il venait d'entrer dans son époque bleue, l'une des plus importantes manifestations de sa carrière de peintre. C'est là que je me suis tout de suite rendu compte du pouvoir extraordinaire de cette manière inadmissible pourtant à première vue dans le cadre des concepts même les plus audacieux établis et reconnus aujourd'hui. I belong to the civilization of images and leaving a mark is what matters most to me. The only thing the press reported was my blue. My cause was so much greater. There are colors that are cheerful, majestic, vulgar, gentle, violent, or sad. For me, colors truly inhabit space. They are highly developed individuals who become a part of us. At the time, I didn't think of my small monochromes as a pictorial possibility. And then suddenly one day, I said to myself, why not? In the life of an artist, the why not moment is always decisive. It's his signal to appear to the world. Yves Peinture was the catalogue of an exhibition that had never taken place. It was my first artistic act, with a preface that was sheer provocation. I was convinced that in the future, no one would paint anything besides monochromes. Drawing, line and form would disappear. We were three friends in search of the supernatural, the sculptor Armand, the poet Claude, and myself. One night when the moon was full, we divided up the universe. I had chosen the sky. Day is blue. Silence is green. Life is yellow. Light draws lines unendingly. And I stand by permeated with indifference. Everything started in Nice in the summer of 47. I was 19, 
My father, Fred Klein, was a figurative painter, and my mother, Marie Raymond, painted abstracts. Manieli, Arp, and Nicolas de Stahl visited often. One day I began painting monochrome surfaces. I must have been trying to see what was visible in the absolute. In my teens, I'd had a revelation. Sky blue was the blue of the infinite, the free zone of universal energy. That day I began to feel hatred for the birds, for flying in my blue sky. They were trying to bore holes in my greatest work. J'ai prouvé la sensation que les lignes et toutes leurs conséquences, contours, formes, perspectives, compositions, composaient très précisément comme les barreaux d'une fenêtre de prison. Au loin, dans la couleur, la vie, la liberté, et moi, devant le tableau, je me sentais en prison. Et c'est, je pense, à cause de cette même sensation d'emprisonnement que Van Gogh s'était crié « Je voudrais être délivré de je ne sais quelle cage horrible ». Matisse, for half a century the defender of the line, had just died in Nice. I wanted to make a film called The War Between Line and Color. Script outline. Sound, continuous drone. Image, solid bright white. Gradual transition from white to yellow in 24 frames. Gradual transition from yellow to red in 24 frames. Gradual transition from red to blue in 24 frames. A hand appears on the blue image. A prehistoric imprint. The history of the long war between line and color begins with the history of mankind. My monochrome proposals are freedom escapes. I am an impressionist, but I'm also a disciple of Delacroix, who said, a painting's worth resides in the ineffable. If you would agree at least to add a small line, a point, or even just a spot of color, we could hang it. But a single solid color is not enough. It's impossible. Spring 1955, my universe of color, orange mean, was turned down by the Salon des Réalités Nouvelles. According to the committee, I had gone beyond all the bounds of non-figuration. A point? A line? Why not a bird? I've often been asked if judo influenced my concept of painting. I did get a lot from judo. Primarily one great principle, the fighting spirit. Each defeat must be seen as an important step towards the final victory. September 52, I traveled to the Kodokan Institute in Japan to obtain my fourth Don black belt. This recognition ranked me among the best French judo masters. We're all free to invent new forms of equilibrium or disequilibrium. I had just embarked upon a new series of color experiments. To me, color is pure energy. October 1955, Klein organized his first show at the Club des Solitaires. It was a failure. However, the ironic reviews prompted one young critic, Pierre Esteny, 
to see the exhibition himself. He understood my intention, to spread the energy of pure color into a space and impregnate the viewer with it. Unfortunately, the public, trapped in the vision it had learned, was not open to contemplating each of my monochromes. From then on, I categorically refused to allow the interplay of two colors. I would call myself Eve the Monochrome. I traveled to Assisi and was awed by what I saw in Basilica of St. Francis. The monochromatic blue frescoes of the School of Siena, attributed to Giotto. My blue would be identical in nature to Giotto's. I thought about it carefully. It would be blue. Nothing but blue. I would need a knowledgeable paint dealer who could help me find the medium that would respect the luminosity of the pigment. Edouard Adon was my man. International Klein Blue, patented as IKB, was perfected between the years 1954 and 58. J'ai cherché un médium fixatif capable de fixer euh, chaque grain de pigment entre eux, puis euh, au support. Tant qu'aucun d'eux ne soit altéré ni privé de ses possibilités autonomes de rayonnement. My patent made me the sole owner of the cosmic blue. January 1957, Epoca Blue opened at Milan's Apollinaire Gallery. Klein exhibited 11 absolutely identical monochromes. It was a scandal. Critics called it a prank and a mystification, saying it was just a copy of Malevich's White on White. I might say that Malevich painted one of his still lives from one of my monochromes. He may have been facing the infinite, but I am in the infinite. Des controverses assez passionnées soulevées par cette manifestation me prouvent la valeur du phénomène et la profondeur réelle du bouleversement qu'il entraîne chez les hommes de bonne volonté fort peu soucieux de subir passivement la sclérose des concepts reconnus et des règles établies. Klein's only advocate was the writer Dino Buzzati, who waxed enthusiastic about the variations of Klein Blue. L'observation la plus sensationnelle est celle des acheteurs. Ils choisissent parmi les 11 tableaux exposés, chacun le leur, et le paient chacun le prix demandé. Et les prix sont tous différents, bien sûr. When I left Milan, the blue period had been launched everywhere in Europe. I had exhibitions in London and Dusseldorf. I was almost famous. It was time to strike, and strike hard. My blue period would be inaugurated in Paris by a double exhibition. Bastani had just introduced me to Iris Claire, the owner of a tiny gallery in the Rue des Beaux-Arts. She was a bit of a neophyte, but in the end, she certainly rose to the occasion. Blue balloons, 1,001 blue balloons, released in the skies over the Saint-Germain-des-Prés. It was my first aerostatic work. We would have to notify the press, radio, and television.
The other exhibition was to take place at the home of Colette Allendy. I planned a blue apotheosis. The ground floor rooms would be packed to the rafters with objects that would create a blue world. A large basin of pure pigment would be lying on the floor. In another area, a screen. Thin cylindrical stems would be suspended, making blue rain. I would be the master of ceremonies. Upstairs, there would be nothing. I would concentrate alone in the room and then present a sensitive pictorial space to the public. I made a note to film everything, for the future, to immortalize my work. The worksite hung, as well as the climactic moments in my life as an artist. In the gallery garden, with Iris Claire and Restani looking on, I would install an obelisk. On the night of the opening, I would proceed to light a monochromatic fire painting, consisting of magnesium flares that would burn for a whole minute. The work would then pass beyond the visible, and the viewer would take away his vision as a memory. My paintings are the ashes of my art. Why produce a work when it is so beautiful simply to dream of it? In Paris, my blue fet went unnoticed. The eternal art conformists continued to ignore me as a fool. Yves Klein, issu du dadaïsme de Marcel Duchamp, voulut un jour signer le ciel de Nice en tant qu'œuvre d'art. Ce fut le signal d'une révolution dans cette ville tranquille où un groupe d'artistes créa l'école de Nice et siège depuis dans une boutique devenue le centre de ce qu'ils appellent l'art total. Armand, un des premiers adeptes de Klein et de cette école, s'est approprié l'eau et le feu. C'est ainsi que... I often traveled down to Nice to see my friend Armand. He had hired Rothrat Rucker, a young German artist, as an au pair girl. She often worked on imprints in his studio. She had her first exhibition in Ben's store, impregnating the floor, Pollock style. Very soon we moved in together, Rue Campagne Première in Montparnasse. To express the idea of pure sensitivity that haunted me, I had to go beyond blue and transgress the limits of perception. Why not exhibit the void itself? I began working in Iris's gallery, all alone. I had to whiten the space to purify it of earlier impregnations. We locked the street door and had the public enter via the hallway of the building, between two Republican guards dressed in full presidential regalia. We also hired private security because I expected vandalism. Shortly before the opening, I got an encouraging note from Albert Camus, with the void, full powers. Mais en somme, vous établissez un trait d'union entre le peintre en bâtiment et l'artiste peintre. Non, pas du tout. Je n'étale pas de la couleur sur les murs. C'est une illusion. Parce qu'en réalité, ce que je veux présenter ici ce soir, ce n'est pas du tout les murs de cette galerie, mais c'est l'ambiance de cette galerie. 
pense que la peinture est invisible, est impalpable, elle est présente, c'est une présence, n'est-ce pas Et pour moi, ma peinture, pour l'instant, habite cette galerie, mais je voudrais qu'elle prenne des dimensions incommensurables, presque, qu'elle se répande, qu'elle s'imprègne, n'est-ce pas, dans l'atmosphère, même, voire même d'une ville, d'un pays, n'est-ce pas En tout cas, votre nature n'a pas horreur du vide, puisque vous avez essayé de peindre le vide, et que nous nous trouvons dans le vide que vous avez peint ce soir. C'est un vide tout blanc. Oui. <rire> Mais le blanc est bleu, vous savez. Le bleu, comment est-il si le blanc est bleu Je trouve que le bleu, tel qu'on le représente, est orange pour moi. Je l'ai toujours su, même avant que je m'en aperçoive. Vous avez demandé que l'on éclaire en bleu l'obélisque de la place de la Oui, Condor. pour moi aujourd'hui c'est vraiment la fête du bleu. L'obélisque bleu, le dé bleu, tout cela se trouve dans la rue, à l'extérieur. C'est pour ça que je dirais, ce que vous ne trouvez pas à l'intérieur, demandez-le à l'extérieur. S'il vous plaît, sortez de la contemplation et laissez-nous tranquille. <rire> Permission to illuminate the obelisk was finally denied at the last minute by the Paris authorities. At around midnight, we were sipping blue cocktails at La Coupole to celebrate my 30th birthday. That evening, Mommy gave me a copy of Air and Dreams by Gaston Bachelard. I'd gone beyond the investigation of art. The Void exhibition had made me inhuman, excluded me from the world. I had become a borderline case an inhabitant of space unable to return to Earth. Jean Tingali noticed me in this space and beckoned to show me how to return. He lived in an alley near the studios of Brancusi e Giacometti. I often visited him and collected rocks from his yard to use as pedestals for my sponges. He was interested in the mysteries of motion and built some amazing machines. He'd been excited about the Void exhibition and suggested we do something together. Pure speed and monochrome stability was a fully triumphant artistic collaboration. In March 1959, Klein traveled to Antwerp for the Vision in Motion exhibition. He had not submitted any work. In front of the space which had been reserved for him, he simply recited, over and over again, a quotation from Air and Dreams by Bachelard. D'abord, il n'y a rien, ensuite il y a un rien profond, puis une profondeur bleue. The curator of the exhibition asked him where his work was. Là, là où je parle en ce moment. I began to sell zones of immaterial pictorial sensitivity. Each purchaser had to give me one kilo of pure gold in exchange for a receipt. To become the owner of the immaterial zone, he then had to solemnly burn the receipt. In exchange, in the presence of two witnesses from the artistic world, I would then throw half of the gold into a stream. January 26th, sale of a zone of immaterial pictorial sensitivity to Dina Buzzati. February 4th, sale of a zone of immaterial pictorial sensitivity to Michael Blankford. At the studio, I had the models pose, but I did not paint their likenesses. Their presence provided me with a sensual climate which stabilized the pictorial climate. Seeing the splendid monochromes I executed from their poses made them laugh. One day I understood that my hands, my working implements, were no longer sufficient. I would have to take the model herself and paint the canvas. I needed living brushes. It was not erotic folly. It was even more beautiful. In the beginning, they thought I was mad. After, they were irresistibly drawn to our work together. 
a few days later on the Ile Saint-Louis in Paris, a strange ceremony took place. Alors, aujourd'hui, nous allons faire quelque chose d'assez spécial. Ce sera une toile quand même assez violente. Klein threw a big canvas on the ground, emptied several gallons of blue onto it, and the model rolled in it. Alors, allez-y, passez la couleur, n'est-ce pas? C'est ça, oui. Bien en rond sur le ventre, et puis alors euh, sur la cuisse, là, n'est-ce pas? C'est ça sur les seins, oui. C'est bien sur le ventre, c'est bien. La cuisse, oui, ça va, oui. Bon, eh bien, allez-y. Bon, très bien, alors, mettez-vous bien en présence de la surface, hein. Regardez bien, vous allez vous appliquer, l'épouser complètement, c'est ça, oui, très bien. Très fort, un contact constant, hein. Bon, voilà, tournez, très lentement, appliquez-vous bien. Toutes les formes doivent épouser la surface. Très bien, c'est ça. Voilà, tournez, tournez, vers la gauche. Attention, 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 attention. Voilà le ventre, là, maintenant, appliquez bien le ventre. Le sein droit, le sein droit, ne l'oubliez pas, le bras. Très bien, revenez un petit peu, revenez, revenez, c'est ça. Bon, eh bien, allez-y, retirez-vous, retirez-vous. Oui. Ah, ça, alors, il est très, très beau, c'est là, vraiment, ça, nous avons fait. Iris, my dear, get me the cover of Paris Match, all in blue, with the headline, The Greatest Painter in the World, Yves Klein, is a Frenchman. One day, I noticed the beauty of the blue upon the sponge. They were impregnated with it, just as I wanted the viewer to be impregnated in front of my monochromes. I made sponges a part of my work. Dear Iris, I've just invented something amazing. The other day, Jean Cocteau was in the gallery, telling you my sponges should not stand on feet. The solution I've found is that of pure imagination. My sponges will float 30 centimeters above the pedestal. They will be hollow. Inside, they will contain a helium balloon and a piece of metal. A magnet will be hidden in the pedestal. The helium will attract the sculpture to rise, and the magnet will pull it down. Please don't tell anyone, my dear Iris. I beg you. It's too serious. At Iris Claire's gallery, Klein met the architect Werner Ronell, who had just been commissioned to design the Gelsenkirchen Opera House. Four 10-meter blue sponge reliefs, as well as two 20-meter monochromes were made to be placed on the lateral walls of the auditorium space. How many sponges would I need per square meter?
I asked Rotrout to join me on site to help me with this Herculean task. First the sponges had to be hung in place, then covered with IKB blue. The huge success of the endeavor put Klein at the forefront of the German art scene. The large-scale works no longer fulfilled my needs. My next painting would be the entire surface of France. I would call it the Blue Revolution. Dear Sirs, It being the case that various bodies of salt water have been given names such as the Red Sea, White Sea, the Black Sea, or the Yellow Sea, none of them have ever been named Blue Sea. I offer you an opportunity to take advantage of my expertise concerning monochrome blue in exchange for a fee which is open to negotiation. Yours truly, Eve Klein. P.S. No danger to goldfish. Dear Sirs, I believe it is my duty to make a humble proposal to you regarding nuclear atomic explosions, to paint the A and H bombs blue so that their explosions will be revealed to all. Naturally, we would rule out the ignominiously radioactive cobalt blue, using only the blue which has earned me my well-known fame. Yours devotedly, Eve Klein. The day Yuri Gagarin declared that the earth was blue, I was in seventh heaven. The question is, if one can paint with a single color, why shouldn't one compose music with a single note? A note that would be sustained for as long as one liked. A symphony. My monotone silent symphony. 20 minutes of music followed by 20 minutes of absolute silence. That is what I would have liked as the theme for my ideal life. March 1960. Klein's living paintbrushes would soon go officially on stage at the Galerie Internationale d'Art Contemporain. Pierre Estany invented the term anthropometry. They said that all I was doing was copying the action painting technique of the American abstractionists Pollock, Newman, and de Kooning. I want to make it clear that my endeavor was totally different from the New York school. The point of the performance was, above all, to define a constant distance between the paint and myself. A debate ensued. Restani declared that the imprint was the most ancient right of all. Georges Mathieu, the painter of lyrical abstraction, stood up. Perhaps, but where is the myth necessary to any creation? Klein replied that the model's action sufficed unto itself, and that the art lay in the event itself, that art is above all health. Klein saw it as the means of escape from the fate of the living dead, subject to social conformism. To cite only one of the errors in interpreting my work, I could mention the Gutai painters of Japan who rolled around on their canvases. Personally, instead of getting paint all over my body, I prefer to don my tuxedo and white gloves.
October 25, 1960, in response to the Void exhibition, Almond installs a fullness show at Iris Claire, packing the space with garbage from floor to ceiling. On peut admirer à Paris, serré comme des sardines, la première manifestation de l'art plein. Cet art consisterait, d'après l'artiste, à condenser le réel en une masse critique. Two days later, Pierre Astani gathered a group of artists in my studio. On one of my blue monochromes, we wrote the manifesto of new realism. We had emerged from secrecy. César was the only one missing. Aujourd'hui, de plus en plus, le monde qui nous entoure est un monde hostile, rebelle, inquiétant. L'artiste qui a besoin de s'exprimer essaye de dominer le monde. Et pour dominer le monde, il va à la source même de la réalité. Ils essayent de plus en plus de s'exprimer par les moyens directs, par tout ce qui l'entoure, les affiches lacérées sur le mur des villes. Si César estime qu'il s'exprime totalement à travers un métal compressé, il a fait une sculpture. Il est en droit de la vendre, de l'exposer comme sculpture. There was Dufresne and his sound poetry. Reis and his industrial harvests. The poster artists Ants and Villeglet crisscrossing the city revealing the absurd character of advertising. As for Jean Tanguely, he represented the premature agony of spectacular, useless machines. Spoery sculpted the consumer society, and Armand continued to abuse objects in various ways. For us, Ostani was not a critic. He belonged to our group. He was committed and passionate. L'artiste se situe toujours par rapport à lui-même et par rapport à son expression. Si l'artiste estime qu'il s'exprime totalement à travers une affiche lacérée, à travers un panneau recouvert de bleu industriel ou à travers un métal compressé, il a réalisé son but, qui est précisément de dominer le monde, de sortir de lui-même et de prendre une parcelle de ce monde pour s'exprimer à travers cette parcelle du monde. For the new realists, the world is a picture, fragments of which must be absconded with. An iconoclastic happening at the Museum of Modern Art in Paris. The group strikes, removing the paintings from the walls, filling the galleries with emptiness. Sunday, November 27, 1960, at dawn. I had decided to create the event, impregnate the world, stage the day. Everything was prepared. Soon I would abscond with a whole Sunday and present a new form of universal collective theater. On sale in newsstands, a single issue had been designed to trick the man in the street, who would inadvertently be the leading actor in the event. The first page showed a leap into the void captured by the photographer Harry Schunk. The newspaper, fully created by Klein, was presented at the Rive Droite Gallery. I am the painter of space. To paint it, I must go there. I had to retouch the space shared by human beings heat and cool the earth, tame the elements, become the master of air. I attempted to obtain industrial backing by filming in my kitchen the proof that my air roof would work. A stream of compressed air would keep the water from falling onto the tile. For the moment, dreaming was enough. The architect Claude Perron drew the sketches of my ideal city. In the future, we will build with light, air, gas, fire, and water. 
Freed from all materialism, man will soon live in levitation in a new Eden. Although Klein was acclaimed as the leader of the New Realist movement, he had some reservations about it. Disagreeing with Restani's claim of kinship to Dadaism, he was prompted to dissolve the movement one night at La Coupole. Klein was absolutely free, impossible to classify. A few months ago, I felt it was urgent to record the signs from the natural world. On my way to Nice, I placed a freshly painted canvas on the roof of my car. As I sped down the highway, the sun, the rain, the wind and the dust left their mark. Nature had done its work. Reaching Nice, I continued the experiment with rock and plant prints I called cosmogonies. January 1961, the city of Krefeld, Germany, gave him a retrospective. Eve Klein was 32. Now his goal was to officialize his myth, to become legendary. Fame had come to him quickly. Did this turbulent and intense young man have anything to do with art? His success and absence of doubt annoyed professionals. Blue, pink, and gold the colors of combustion were broken down into three rooms. Saint Rita of Cassia, patroness of impossible and desperate cases, thank you for the powerful, decisive, and marvelous aid you have given me. Please intercede with our omnipotent Father, Holy God, and ask him to grant me the mercy of dwelling in my works, so that they may be ever more beautiful. The grace to discover new things in art continually, although, alas, I am not always worthy of building and creating great beauty. May everything I produce be beautiful. So be it, with my infinite gratitude. An offering to St. Rita, an ex voto, a triptych the colors of flame. Imaginez de remplacer à la surface de l'eau tranquille des bassins les élégants jets d'eau de ces bassins par de brillants jets de feu, des sculptures de feu sur l'eau, pourquoi pas on ne peut pas, je pense, discuter de, du point de vue per perfection esthétique la qualité du feu. Le feu est beau en soi, n'importe comment. Yves Klein, après avoir été le peintre du bleu et le peintre du vide, voici devenu maintenant le peintre du gaz. Du gaz Non, euh, je dirais plutôt je suis le peintre du feu. Vous attachez donc au feu une valeur rituelle Oui, euh, une valeur rituelle très contradictoire. Ne croyez-vous pas que la contradiction se situe aussi entre le principe du bleu et le principe du feu, précisément Il est bleu. Justement, et de toute façon, le feu euh, est bleu, or, et rose aussi. Ce sont les trois couleurs de base dans ma peinture monochrome. Et pour moi, c'est un principe d'explication universelle, d'explication du monde. March 61, 
Gaz de France Research Facility. They've agreed to sponsor my first fire painting session. I asked a friend to dress up as a fireman. I wanted to confront the forces of flame and water. What arouses my fascination with fire? Klein's second experiment associated fire with anthropometry. He had nude models apply their wet bodies to dry cardboard. The mark of fire will frame the curves of life. The invisible trace appears at the instant of combustion. The abrupt vision of human silhouettes in the heart of the image reminds me strongly of the shadows of the blast on the walls of Hiroshima. What is it that drives me to immobilize the imprint, the trace of the immediate? Both the heart of the void and the heart of man, fires burn. To be universal, one must be like fire in nature, gentle and cruel. One must be able to contradict oneself. I designed my wedding to Rotrout as a work of art in movement. I often used to repeat to her, if something marvelous does not happen to me every day, my day is shot. The weather is fine. The sky is blue. I'll be in Cannes in about an hour. The film will open the festival tonight. Le film italien, Le monde des chiens de Giacopetti, est un film ébouriffant, éclatant, percutant et qui cherche démesurément à l'être. Klein's obsession with fame finally betrayed him. Out of opportunism, the filmmaker Giacopetti misrepresented Klein's work. Le peintre tchécoslovaque Yves Klein est prêt. La musique l'a remonté à bloc. Ses modèles enduits de peinture seront les pinceaux humains avec lesquels Klein donnera forme et couleur à sa fièvre créatrice. Peut-être avez-vous déjà pressenti que la couleur préférée de Klein est le bleu. De même, sa forme préférée est aussi le bleu. Bien plus, le bleu est son unique forme et son unique couleur. Bleu sont ses tableaux que tout Paris s'arrache. They missed the point. They didn't see my desire for art to be one with life, to impregnate the world. Ridiculed in public when he was expecting acclaim, Eve Klein had a minor heart attack while leaving the screening.
They say I have become a myth, that I invented conceptual art, body art, and land art. Yes, I was an agitator, a disturber of the artistic peace. Apparently I am no longer alive. Yet I must continue to extend myself, spread myself ever farther and higher. My new studio will be all of space. Immaterial space.